And now to introduce the concept of the base or reference angle. So base angles, as I refer to them, they're often referred to as reference angles in many texts, are defined by an angle that is in between 0 and 90 degrees, or between 0 and pi on 2 radians. We use these to calculate the angles in the other quadrants. An example of where we've just used a base angle was that 30 degrees. That we're plussing and minusing, plussing and minusing. That is a base angle. The procedure to calculate trigonometric expressions are as follows. We need to determine what quadrant it's in, determine if it's positive or negative, rewrite the angle in the form, so where we write it in the form of pi plus or uh, the reference angle or pi minus the reference angle or 180 plus the uh, reference angle, 180 minus pi uh, of the reference angle or 360, you know what I mean, that horizontal angle and then the answer will be the trigonometric expression of the reference angle with either a positive or negative sign put on there dependent on the angle. Let's do some examples to confirm what we're talking about here. So given that sine of 30 is the same as sine of pi and 6 is equal to a half we need to calculate the following. Sine of 150 degrees. Well we've done this just earlier and we have established that uh, sine 150 degrees is in the second quadrant because it's about here, There's, there it is, it's in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, so C-A-S-T, sine is positive, it's positive. Uh, a good way to remember it is cast. So uh, second quadrant, it's positive. 150 can be said the same as 180 minus 30. It's positive, so that's going to be equal to sine 30 degrees, and that is equal to one half. Sine 750 degrees, what quadrant will that be in? Well, zero, 180, 360, uh, 360 plus 180 is going to be 4 something, 180, uh, so 360 plus 200 is the 560, so 540, and then we've got, add another one, that's 720, ah, so it's going to be back in the first quadrant, so it's in the first quadrant, we know from C-A-S-T that that's positive, so sine uh, of 750 is the same as saying sine of 720 plus 30 degrees, which is equal to sine 30 degrees because it's positive, and that is also equal to a half. Sine of negative 30 degrees. We have established that the negative angles go in the opposite direction, so negative 30 degrees is actually going to be smack bang in the fourth quadrant here. There is negative 30 degrees because there's negative 90 degrees down there. So it's in the fourth quadrant. And only cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So therefore uh, it is negative. And so therefore sine of negative 30 degrees is the same as saying zero take away 30 degrees. So that's going to be equal to a negative version of sine 30 degrees, which is negative one half. Sine negative 330 degrees. So zero, negative 90, negative 180, negative 360 degrees. So negative 330 is going to be in that first quadrant. So it's in the first quadrant, and again, all trigonometric values are positive in the first quadrant, so therefore it's positive. We can rewrite that as sine negative 360 plus 30 degrees. You'll notice the pluses and minuses still work in exactly the same way as uh, it did previously. Uh, so that's the same as saying sine 30 degrees because it's in the first quadrant and so therefore the answer is one half. Sine 7 pi on 6. So now we're in radians. So it's 0 pi on 2 pi, 3 pi on 2. 7 pi on 6 is going to be here in the third quadrant. So it's third quadrant. C-A-S-T. 
Only tangent is positive there, so therefore it's negative. So sine 7 pi on 6 can be written as uh, sine 6 pi on 6 plus pi on 6. Most textbooks will actually express it as pi plus pi on 6. That's fine. It doesn't matter which one you want to write it as. And that is equal to negative sine pi on 6. And that is equal to negative 1 half. Sine 13 pi on 6. Well, if we've got 0 pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi, 13 pi on 6. Well, that's the same as saying 12 pi on 6. So 13 pi on 6 is going to be up in the first quadrant again. So this is the first quadrant. Everything is positive in the first quadrant. That's where you want to be. You want to be in that first quadrant to be super positive. And so this is going to be equal to sine. And I am going to be a little bit lazy if you don't mind. I'm just going to write 2 pi plus pi on 6. I'm sure you'll forgive me. And that is equal because it's positive. That's the same as saying sine pi on 6. And that is equal to 1 half. So now we've got negative 7 pi on 6, so we need to go in reverse. 0, negative pi on 2, negative pi. Now I, because I have the power of editing, I actually made a mistake in the first draft of this because I forgot about denominators. Negative pi, of course, is the same as saying negative 6 pi on 6. So negative 7 pi on 6 is actually going to be in the which quadrant? It is, of course, going to be in the second quadrant. So this is going to be in the second quadrant. It's now C-A-S-T. It is positive because all sine values are positive in the second quadrant. So this is going to be sine pi. Now, do I do plus or minus? Well, just as we normally do to get things in the second quadrant, you minus that. And it's negative pi minus pi on 6. And it's positive, so it's the same as saying pi on 6. And so this is equal to a half. So given that sine theta is equal to 0 0.42, cos x is equal to 0 0.7, tan theta is equal to 0 0.38, write down the values of the following. Most students go and do the rookie mistake when they go into this question. They think that the question is asking to solve for theta, solve for x, and solve for alpha. And then not. They're asking you to write the values uh, given what angle or what uh, uh, what quadrant they're in. That's what it's actually asking for. It's not asking to solve for the pro numeral. So it says they write down the values of sine pi plus theta. So what does that mean from a unit circle point of view? Well, that means that if there's pi, there's pi on two, there's zero, there's negative, uh, that's three pi on two. Pi plus theta puts it in the third quadrant. Sine is negative in the third quadrant. So therefore, sine pi plus theta is the same as saying negative sine theta, which therefore is equal to negative 0 0.42. Cos pi minus x, while the angle has moved itself, there's pi over there, into the second quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant, so this is going to be a negative answer. So cos pi minus x is going to be equal to negative cos x, which is equal to negative 0 0.7. 10, 2 pi minus alpha. So we're in, let's get our unit circle in. There's 2 pi, there's pi. Pi minus alpha is in the fourth quadrant. So therefore, tan, only cos is positive, so tan is negative. Therefore, tan 2 pi minus alpha is equal to negative tan alpha. And the answer will be negative 0 0.3. If cos x equals negative cos pi on 6 and pi over 2 is, uh, or x is in between pi over 2 and pi, find the value of x. So what does that mean? Cos of x, uh, the, whatever that angle is, is going to give you the same answer if I just do cos pi of x, but chuck a negative sign. 
We also know the angle is in between pi on 2 and pi. So there's pi on 2, that's pi. It's the second quadrant. So what's it going to have to be? Well, there can only be one thing it can be. That's going to be pi minus pi on 6. Because that gets us into the second quadrant. 6 pi on 6, take away pi on 6. is equal to 5 pi on 6. We've got a very complicated diagram here where we need to go and solve for A, B, C, and D. And, and it says given A, B, and C, and D are equal to all of this business here. I would just use my symmetry properties that we established earlier. As you can see here, we've got some symmetry values here and we've got some symmetry values down here as well. So I know that A is going to be negative one half because it's been reflected. In. B is going to be root three on two. C is going to be uh, one half and D is going to be negative root three on two. So I've already solved A, B, C and D. And in fact, we can just write that down there. So then we've just got E and F to solve, where it says tan pi minus theta and tan negative theta. Now you could use, uh, you could go and deduce accordingly uh, using uh, the values of the angles if you've already figured that out. Honestly, I would just give use what the question has said. So the question saying here that we've got um, these values A and B. Tan pi on theta is going to be that line where it says A and B. That's going to be, that is pi minus theta in there. So if you remember that tan, tan of an angle is equal to sine of the angle over cos of the angle. Therefore, tan pi minus theta is equal to sine pi minus theta over cos pi minus theta. So here, we've already established what sine pi on theta is. So that's equal to root three over two. And as the cos pi on theta is negative one half. So therefore, this will be equal to root three over two divided by negative one half, which if we do good old fashioned multiplying of or dividing by fractions, so that is equal to negative root three. For this one here, I'm gonna use the same principle where tan negative theta is equal to uh, sine negative theta over cos negative theta. Sine negative theta is equal to negative three root two over cos negative theta, which is equal to a half. And, oh, it's the exact same division all over again. Um, and instead of the negative being at the bottom, the negative's at the top, but the whole other working out's gonna be the same. And that is negative root three. And it makes sense because it's in the fourth quadrant and 10 is always negative in the fourth quadrant.